Hello and welcome. Today we're going to look at all the different tools that are available to us in Logic Pro, as well as some shortcuts to get to them quicker so that we can speed up and improve our workflow. So let's get to it. Okay, so one of the first things to recognize is that we have two sets of tools. We have our left click tool and we have our command click tool. And both of these, if I click the pull down, you'll see they're the exact same set of tools. But this allows us to have two different tools selected at each time. So my left click tool, this is gonna be what I'm normally using, what I have set at all times. And your command click tool, anytime I hold down command, my second tool will show up. So this allows you to easily toggle from one tool to the next. Now, generally speaking, I'd leave my left click tool to the pointer tool, and then I'll change my command click tool as needed. So as I go through all the tools right now, I'm gonna change them using my command click tool. So the very first tool, that's your pointer tool. So that's the tool you're most likely gonna have on at all times. So the pointer tool allows you to drag regions around. You can resize regions or select different regions. So that's your basic pointer tool. The next one we have is the pencil tool. Now in this window, the arrange page, the pencil tool will allow you to create blank MIDI regions. So if I go to my instrument track here, hold down command, now I have my pencil tool. Now if I click, now I have a blank region. Now in a moment, we'll move over to the piano roll and I'll show you how you can use the pencil in that window as well. Next up, we have the eraser tool. This should be fairly self-explanatory. So again, if I hold down command, you'll get the eraser tool and this will allow you to delete regions. Now in my mind, it's kind of silly to switch to the eraser tool because really all you have to do is select any region using your pointer tool and hit the delete key on your keyboard and then it'll delete it as well, just like the eraser tool. So no real need to use the eraser tool. Next, we have the text tool. So this allows you to rename regions. So here, if I click on my region, I can rename this to whatever I'd like. And I can do that for audio tracks as well. Next, we have the scissor tool. Now the scissor tool, this is a tool that I use very often, and I'm gonna have my command click tool set to the scissors most of the time. So the scissors, as you might've guessed, will chop regions. So again, I hold down command and I can chop regions, which then allows me to move that little bit around, or I can hit delete and erase it. And anytime you wanna undo something you've done, you can just go command Z. Next up, we've got the glue tool. So to demonstrate that, I'm just gonna redo that cut I made and the glue will just join any cuts that you previously made. And it glues them back together. You can also use a glue tool to create new audio files by gluing two different files together. Next, we have the solo tool. So I press play and click on any region using the solo tool, then it'll solo that region. to bear they went heavy on me like a chill through the air feeling lost and ashamed now the solo tool is not one i use very often uh, the reason for that is you can simply quickly hit the letter s and that'll solo the entire track that you're on if you want to just solo any particular region then you can select the region you want to solo and click on Control S. I wanna tell you when more. And then just that one region will be soloed. And then click Control S once again to unsolo that region. Now mute, this is another one that I don't use very often because I just use a shortcut instead. But if you select the tool, then this will just mute any region that you click using the mute tool but you can accomplish the same thing by selecting the region and once again, going Control M. So there's no real need to ever select the mute tool. Now the zoom tool, this is a handy one. 
with the zoom tool activated, you just click and drag and it'll zoom in to the area that you've highlighted. And then once you're zoomed in, if you wanna to return to the last position you were in, just click the mouse once and you'll return back to where you were. Now this is another one that you can get to easily using a shortcut. So I'll just go back to the mute tool for a second. And now if I hold down control and option together, now I get my zoom tool without having to be set to the zoom tool. So again, now I've just got my zoom tool again by holding control and option, and I can zoom in and zoom out very quickly. Next on the list is the fade tool. So to demonstrate this, I'll just zoom in here. And this is, you're gonna use a lot if you make some cuts and some edits. Um, but if you wanna say, Say I wanna just fade in the, big, the beginning of this note here. I'll just click where I want the fade to end and drag to the beginning and then it'll create a fade there. I'll solo this so we can hear that. And in now. You can hear that fade in there. Then you can hold command and you can adjust the curve of the fade. And if you wanna get rid of the fade, just hold command and option and click on the fade and that'll disappear. Now next we have our automation select tool. So this only applies to when we're doing automation. So for that, we'll go to our automation mode, which to get to, we'll click the letter A. And let's just create a little bit of automation here. I'm just gonna click some points and we'll just make some random volume automation. So you'll hear what that sounds like. So if you wanna select any of these points, we'll just get our automation select tool, select that. That way we can either boost or lower those points all at once. And then next we have our automation curve tool. So as the name suggests here, this is if you wanna add a curve to your automation. So we'll simply click and we can create different curves on our automation, like so. And now if you wanna get rid of automation points, you can either double click to get rid of certain points, or one other way is just to drag points over like that. And we can return to where we were. Now let's get out of automation view by clicking A once again. You can also get to the automation view by clicking this button up here. Now we have the marquee tool. Now the marquee tool in one way is really similar to the scissor tool. It'll let you highlight different parts of your region. So let's say right here. And once that's highlighted, I can just hit the delete key and that'll cut that out and I can undo that, or it'll also let you copy. So let's say I select that and I hold down option, I click and drag, and now I just copied that little region that I selected. I can delete that as well. Now the other place where the marquee tool comes in handy is in automation. So let's go back to automation. Again, we'll press the letter A and Let's say I just want to make an adjustment on this one word or phrase right here. So I use my marquee tool, select that, and then if I click, it automatically makes two points here. And then now I can either lower or boost that one word. So this is a really handy tool when you're doing automation. And the last tool we have in the range page is the flex tool. So I'll select that. I'll get out of automation here. And what we'll have to do is turn on flex up here. And then once again, turn on flex on the actual track as well. And then you'll see here, it's gonna analyze the track. And now let's analyze it. I can either stay in this mode or I can get out of the flex mode and actually make any changes right in here. So again, if I hold down command, now 
let's say I want to lengthen this note here. I can click and drag and lengthen or shorten that note. And I can do that to any notes. Now keep in mind, if you lengthen one note, it'll shorten the next note to it, as you can see here. So those are all the tools in the Arrange page. Now let's go check out the piano roll. So to get to the piano roll, I'll just hit the letter P on my keyboard, and that'll bring this up here. And you'll notice once again, we have two sets of tools. So you can have a different set of tools set in the piano roll than you have set in the Arrange page. So if I hit the Command Click Tool pull down list here, you'll notice there's a lot of the same ones, but there's a few different. So the Pencil Tool, as I mentioned before, we can use this in the piano roll, and this will allow us to create new notes. So if I click and drag, I can create some MIDI notes. Right now I have a piano loaded in, so that's why it sounds like a piano. The next new tool we see is the Finger Tool. This is really similar to the Pointer Tool, just allows you to shorten or lengthen notes, but you can do the same thing just with the Pointer Tool. So no real need to use the finger tool. And the next new one would be the quantize tool. So let's say I played these notes in and this was slightly off. So I can set my quantize value here, which is currently set to 16th notes. So I set this to quarter notes. And if I clicked on this note with the quantize tool, then it will move it over to the nearest quarter note. Now, you can also do this simply by selecting the note and hitting the letter Q on your keyboard, and that'll quantize it as well. So another shortcut, you don't really need to use the quantize tool itself. The velocity tool, so this will change the velocity of the note. So the velocity is how hard you hit the note when you recorded it. So you can change that after the fact. So if we go to our velocity tool, I'm gonna click and drag up, and you're gonna hear the note get louder, and if I drag down, you're gonna hear the note get quieter. And you'll also notice the value of the velocity as well as the color changes as I change the velocity. So if you happen to strike one note really hard or one really soft, you can go and change that afterwards with the velocity tool. Now the last tool, that's different here is the brush tool. Now this is similar to the pencil tool, but you'll see the difference in a second. So with the brush tool, we can draw in notes, but it'll draw them in based on our quantized value. So if I select a smaller value like 16th notes, then I can draw in a bunch of 16th notes. Whereas the pencil tool, The pencil tool will make the notes as long as you drag them. So just a different way of inputting notes in the piano roll. There you have it. Those are all the different tools available to us in Logic Pro. And getting to know these tools and the shortcuts to access them quicker is going to greatly improve our workflow and help us finish our projects much quicker. Speaking of shortcuts, don't forget to download your free Logic Pro X hotkey cheat sheet by following the link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments and we'll see you in the next video.